Okay, fellas, we're going to try this one more time with the nozzle repositioned. I'm interested to see how it ignites with this new setting.
don't know about you. Um, now, one thing I noticed that was very strange. You see now I had the gas setting at a particular position, which was not on full. The thrust coming off of this thing was higher with the gas setting on low versus when I turned it on full bore. I don't know if that was observant by the way that piece of metal was dangling. There is a lot of thrust coming off of this thing, dude. This thing will definitely give you some serious high turbulence in the kiln, which would eliminate any stratification. Um, this thing ain't no joke, dude. Forgot to get a pressure reading. I'm almost positive it's 75 PSI's at approximately 11 cubic foot per minute. So, substantial amount of air. But, uh... If this thing was stainless steel, it would glow even hotter. If it was insulated, it would burn even better, which is eventually where we're going with this. This will eventually be a ceramic um, piece. That's why I'm moving towards the extruded design, because I think it'd be easier to make this out of the type of ceramic I want to use. I mean, sure, I could spin these like the movie Ghost, but uh, yeah, I don't want to try to make these things round. Another thing I want to point out, a fundamental principle of this burner application is that the size of the flame that would have been shooting out of this thing or a conventional spud burner flame is going to be three to four times larger, maybe even up to ten times larger than the flame and energy or then the flame size this thing puts out. We're taking that same amount of heat energy in a huge flame and we're focusing it down into a very small area. Um, most forges by design cannot receive over a set amount of BTUs because there'd be flames just flying out the door. Those spud burners are junk, I'm telling you guys, man. You're getting ripped off. And I'm not just saying that trying to make a buck. I mean, I've, I just had seen how they operate. I know how they operate and I see fire shooting out of everybody's forge. Like fire is literally blasting out of the doors of your guys' forge. You are wasting fuel. If that flame were souped up with a little bit of compressed air injection, it will burn completely inside of the forge, delivering all that heat to the inside of the forge. So yes, my combustion chambers glow a little bit, but they burn all of the fuel. That jet of heat flying out of this thing is all going into the, the forge or the kiln and you will not have fireballs shooting out the forge if you were to use a smaller version of this versus a traditional spud burner or those ribbon burners. Those ribbon burners are, in my opinion, kind of lacking too. They're just not, they suck. Let's face it, they, they kind of suck. Not an advocate of the ribbon burner at all. I just think you guys could get the job done a lot faster with a lot more heat. You have to leave ribbon burners on. This thing you can fire up and have your kiln up to temperature within a minute. Turn it right back off. So that's the fundamental principle behind my goal here. Is we want to turn a spud flame that's four feet long into a high powered flame that's small enough to get the job done inside the containment unit that we're firing things in. I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> this thing is incredible. The air temperature in here got unbearable. It's pretty cold outside, it's like right around 40 I think. Not real cold, but uh, brought the temperature up about 75 degrees on the thermal couple in here and the thermal couple is about three feet off the floor and you know how air stratificates so down here at this level we were 75 degree air temperature I can't imagine what the temperature got up here in the top area um, this is not made to heat humans this is an industrial device so Spare me on the efficiency stuff about the glowing combustion chamber. I realize that um, 
Rocket engines are also not efficient either, but um, they get the job done in a timely manner. And uh, sometimes you have to have sacrificial um, power draw to make something work properly. Kind of like a turbocharger or a supercharger. Turbocharger isn't really sacrificial, but a supercharger is definitely um, a sacrificial deal. So, but it gives the engine power, similar to where we were allowing this combustion chamber to glow to induce a state of combustion that cannot be sustained otherwise. The IR cranking off of this combustion chamber is for the most part serving as an ignition source for these high velocity fuels. Yeah, it's being blown into fire, but heating those gases up to a combustible temperature takes a certain amount of time, several microseconds. So that IR energy being available to heat these gases to a combustible temperature is uh, critical to running this thing at these levels. This is not a spud burner, guys. This is a completely different beast. I'd also like to point out we are not mixing propane and air in this nozzle. That is not what you're seeing here. Something very unique is taking place. This uh, part of this test involves me slowly reducing the length of this combustion chamber. But before we do that, I need to get an actual measurement scale drawn up on the board. And we will... Um, take some incremental measurements of the flame we're going to look at the way this thing behaves and in each test i'm going to take um either a half inch or an inch out of the combustion chamber i'm thinking maybe taking a half inch out but um that that could be a dumb idea for the simple fact that resonance is a very touchy thing if any of you guys who are well versed in the resonance field of combustion let me know what you think about my ha my choice using a half inch should i drop it down you think in case a half inch is outside the spectrum able to capture the properties of resonance that would enable this cavity to function at an optimum level that's um the main thing here changing the length there is a lot of uh, frequency coming off this thing the sound is like a high frequency pulse jet until i move the nozzle in so there is something going on me moving this nozzle from the plus position stopped the resonance and we got that nice crisp roar so i mean there are a lot of things a guy could do to, to to dial this thing in we could analyze the sound and look at the sound spectrum and then determine you know what setting is actually the most crisp my ears can dial it in real close but i would imagine that um a sound analysis like me being able to view a video monitor would um, definitely help me position this far better. But it, isn't it funny that, um, as you can see, I'm only a half inch moved in there, maybe. Maybe not even that much. This had a dramatic impact on combustion. So back to the notion of cutting a half inch of this off per test interval, maybe a little bit much. Maybe I should reduce it to a quarter inch. Very laborious, but... Yet nothing about this process is supposed to be easy. We're not in it for what's easy. <laughs> we want to do all the hard stuff now. But, um, so yes. Yeah, so whether or not repositioning this nozzle altered the effects of combustion based on resonance properties is, is up for debate. It could just be something as simple as the Venturi attributes of Bernoulli's principle being more effective with the nozzle in this position versus out here. Maybe it pumps air differently. A vortex difference in the flow is definitely going to take place. You've got a high-speed jet flying this way and low-speed laminar flow on the exterior from the Venturi effect. So you're going to get a rolling wind pattern in there. Where that rolling wind pattern takes place is definitely going to determine whether or not you're at an optimum combustion setting. So... It was definitely very loud when it was um, resonating. It was so loud that um, it was going right through the earplugs. And Delicious to Blair pointed out one time that, um, or several times actually, that the louder the device is, the more even the combustion. And that makes sense. If you're getting explosions, that, that's 
sounds like more total combustion to me. It, it's certainly a hotter combustion mix if it's exploding, you know, a thousand times a second. Someone else was talking to me about uh, Pulse Jet too. Can't remember what they were called, Pulse Jet Combustion or something like that. Not Pulse Jet, but um, man, it's on the tip of my tongue. At any rate, I think we're gonna stop this here for now and uh, take a look at the footage. And at one point I'm going to buy a scale so we can examine the flow rate of propane. This bottle was open full tilt, which if any of you have information on these bottles to help us out, I have purchased a blowtorch in the past, one of those wand blowtorches that claims it's 500,000 BTUs, which would lead one to believe that if you're running this tank at full valve with the size of the apertures that I have in this nozzle setup is far larger than the spud of any burner. So we are at a minimum 500,000 BTUs, probably way more than that. Um, but uh, for the most part, I don't have any definite proof. The air input, I did not check the pressure. I'm pretty sure this nozzle runs at 75 PSI's back pressure on a 6.5 horsepower air compressor, which is a significant amount of power being dumped into this thing. But hey, the more power the cooler, in my opinion. Um, not trying to win any awards for efficiency. If you can get the job done faster with a less efficient burner, aren't you still hitting your target mark? That is possible, you know. You could have the most efficient burner in the world, but if the damn thing doesn't put out enough heat to get the job done in a timely manner, then what the hell are you doing, man? I mean, I'm getting uh, efficiency buffed by people. They're, they're knocking me hard on efficiency, and I, I understand that. I get that. But um, don't discredit the entire device just because it gets red hot. We're working on bigger things here than your average burner.